Illustrious is a potent force with a powerful punch. In a war zone, the flight deck is a buzz of activity as jets and helicopters are readied for action. But not all the aircraft can be kept on the flight deck ready to roll. Some are stored in the hangar below and need to be moved up to the flight deck as quickly as possible. And that's where these come in, two massive aircraft lifts, one here at the back, the other up at the front. Each lift weighs 70 tonnes and it can move the three levels between the hangar and the flight deck in just 36 seconds. And that speed is important because, well, when you're fighting a war, you want to get your aeroplanes up here to the flight deck and in the air as quick as possible. And that's where traditional engineering struggle. The aircraft lifts are hydraulic. Most hydraulic systems on their own are powerful but slow. And although they could lift the aircraft, it would take far too long. These devices provided a solution. They're called accumulators. And, well, they don't look like much, but they can greatly increase the pressure in a hydraulic system. And that can speed things up. So it's thanks to these that that lift can get on with its job and it can do it quickly. A 19th century engineer, William George Armstrong, invented them. More famous for manufacturing guns, he was also into dockside hydraulic cranes. These were powered by water, but mains pressure at the time was low and often unreliable. So Armstrong devised an entirely new way of creating high pressure within a hydraulic system. And Armstrong's device, the accumulator, was used to its biggest effect on one of London's most famous landmarks, the Tower Bridge. At the height of Britain's industrial power, London faced a problem. The Thames docks were home to large commercial shipping, which needed access upriver, but the growing population needed bridges. The solution was a bridge with two lifting roadways, or bascules. People and traffic could cross, but when shipping needed to get through, the bascules could be raised. At first glance, the bridge really isn't much like an aircraft carrier at all but they both had to lift heavy weights. Each of the carrier's lifts can raise 85 tonnes. Each of those two road sections, bascules, weighs 1,200 tonnes. And speed was important too, because when the bridge was first opened in 1894, it was raised over 6,000 times in that first year. That's once every 20 minutes in its operational hours. And it's the accumulator that provided the hydraulic pressure to do this. At the time, they were amongst the biggest accumulators that Armstrong had built. But today, the bridge is all electric. I'm down in the depths of one of the towers. That's the bascule up above with the road going across. And from time to time, you can hear the thump of the traffic crossing overhead. When the bridge is raised, that pivoted counterweight, everything you can see painted white, up there, swings down through this cavernous chamber. Probably best if I don't hang around too long here. And this is one of the old accumulators still down here in the base of Tower Bridge. I say one of them because there were originally six as part of the hydraulic system. As you can see, they are quite large. Each one weighed 100 tonnes and had to be able to move up and down within the chamber. That's some serious Victorian engineering. They did love a big bolt and a rivet, didn't they? Serious Victorian engineering they may be, but they still have modern applications, and there are contemporary engineers who know how to make and use them, people like Geraint Owen. Right, it's time finally to get to grips with accumulators and find out just how they work. Geraint, you've built one. Well, you say you've built one, this is... It's just some pipes and a foot pump. What it is largely some pipes and foot pump. We've got you a bit of a mock-up of uh, your tower bridge. And okay. You've got a little stirrup pump and a bucket of water. Okay. Just to give you an idea um, of you pumping up the bridge, because you're doing all the hard work, um, as imagining there's a boat coming. So if you get pumping, we can see the bridge opening. So this is the bridge. Yeah. Ship's coming along, and this is just with a pump to open the bridge. Yeah. Right. That's working. Oh. Pumping the bridge up. There goes tower bridge. 
And eventually your hard work is leading to the, uh, to the bridge being open. Yeah. So it's simple hydraulics, you've got a pump, you've got a ram, up, up it opens. Yeah. So Oops. what difference does an accumulator make? The trouble is that you've been doing that um, sort of in real time um, and it can only open as fast as you can pump. Yes. Whereas if we, instead of opening the bridge, we get you to, open, uh, to put the energy into an accumulator, which we've got an accumulator here, so if you get pumping again, we can use the same amount of energy and put it into this accumulator. So you pump away merrily. Here we've got some weights onto a, onto a hydraulic ram that's keeping the water under pressure. That's probably enough. So that's now there. It can stay there. The energy is being stored. Any time we want, we can now open the valve and uh, open the bridge. So okay. here comes your boat. Open the valve. And just in one smooth stroke, the thing's open. Same it's... amount of energy. But it's, it's stored in there. It literally does accumulate energy then and exactly keeps it that. for when you need it. Exactly that. So it's just kind of a battery for hydraulics to store some energy. So an accumulator stores energy ready to be released the moment it's needed. The more accumulators a system has, the more energy it can store and the faster it can work. On Illustrious, each lift has four accumulators. They can boost the pressure of the whole hydraulic system up to 172 bar. And if you consider that your average car tyre is at just over 2 bar, you get a sense of the energy stored in it. And the accumulators themselves are a fraction the size of the original ones, which is probably just as well, because there wouldn't be much room for aircraft in here if you had to fit those huge towers in. A model of the bridge may demonstrate the principle of accumulator power, but I've devised a test that'll take things a little further. Well, a lot further. I'm going to find out how quickly I can move a car along an inclined trailer using just a 62 horsepower engine driving a hydraulic pump. I'm then going to use the same engine and pump to charge an accumulator. And then let's see what happens when I release the energy from that so I'll need a bank of accumulators. There are half a dozen of these which are the sort of modern design of nitrogen-filled accumulator. Where before we had a, a basically a ram with some weights on the top which yeah. followed your tower bridge model, this is how hydraulic accumulators are now done. Modern accumulators contain a bladder, like a heavy-duty balloon, which is filled with high-pressure gas. As hydraulic fluid is pumped in from the bottom, the bladder is squeezed, storing potential energy. When energy is then needed from the accumulator, a valve is opened. The compressed bladder very quickly expands back to its original size, forcing the hydraulic fluid out under extreme pressure. So it's accumulating that energy, which is the same, but rather than lifting a weight and holding it, and there's the potential energy in that lifted weight that can drop, it's, it's actually compressing, it's squashing, squashing. Squashing the nitrogen. And that wants to come back to its full volume, and, and that's where the energy is stored. So exactly it's the same that. system. OK. Um, I guess we're going to do this first without the accumulators. You've got, got it right. I don't have to pump, though. No, 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 no. All we've got to do is get the engine started. Can we fire up the engine? Thank you, Adrian. Using only the engine, the hydraulic pump creates a constant pressure of just over a quarter of a bar with which to drag the half-ton car. It moves, but it's slow. It's the equivalent of me pumping the model bridge with the stirrup pump on its own. But by charging the accumulators instead, we can build up the pressure and store much more energy. We can, and we might be able to put a bit more in as well. Wouldn't that be awful? What if we stored like, quite a lot more energy than we actually needed in there and then deployed it all in one big lump? Is it just me or is that machine really quite terrifying? There is a great deal of energy being stored up in the accumulator, so yeah. there's an inherent danger, I suppose. Good, good. We've well, confirmed all my ways. Charging the accumulators for just 10 minutes creates a pressure of 241 bar. That'll provide the same energy as having 23 of these engines pumping at once. Right, OK, if we're ready, everybody, this is it. Live firing. Three, two, one. <laughs> that was a lot of energy in one hit. I mean, all in one lump. That certainly worked, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I'm probably in the interests of science and engineering, we should... Go and examine the damage? Yeah, yeah. yeah come on, let's go and have a look. Now, 
Behold, a flying car. Thanks to the instantaneous accumulator energy. Well, that's pretty tired, isn't it? I've seen worse. So a connection with the Victorian bridge puts modern jet aircraft into the air in just a matter of minutes.